What's up, guys? This is Muscle Matters. We're your hosts, Blake Bernard, Steve Southers, and tonight we're going to talk about youth athletic development. Steve, you are, um, you had all the questions, so why don't you direct you, them? You know what? Um, well, we'll start off with me. I've got a, I've got a young man, and it's a challenge. Um, every time I turn around, this young man's taller. Yeah. <laughs> it's like literally every time I turn around, I'm like, bruh, stop growing. Yes. Like when, he, when I got him like two years ago, he wore a size nine. He's in a size 13 now, and he just turned 13 years old. Oh, man. Yes. He's got some big yes. mitts to grow into. Yes, and he, and he reminds me of Bambi. He walks, he drags his feet, and I'm always, we, I call him his silly foot. And I go, get your silly foot straight. Get your silly foot straight because it'll just be dragging somewhere along behind him. And most people, when they start training, they want to do the fundamentals. You know, uh, let's go squat, let's go deadlift, let's go bench press, let's go squat, let's go deadlift, let's go bench press. But with somebody like this young man who's in a constant state yeah. of growth, I mean, he's in a constant state of growth. He's like all legs and arms. His torso hasn't grown yet. And it's just, it, it's... He wanted to do the the ladder. He wants to break out the ladder. He wants to do speed work. And I'm like, you can't skip yet on your feet. Yes. So we need to make you learn how to skip before I can break out the ladder. So because you're still growing and you're so uncoordinated. So my question to you is, when you have that young athlete who is in the middle of a huge, and he's just growing. Every time you see him, he's growing. He's taller. He's just longer. and He's, he's lanky. How do you feel about weight training? I think it's awesome when done appropriately. Okay. Okay. And it's probably going to look a lot different than what a lot of our viewers may suspect. Like you said, they're chasing the big three, mm -hmm. right? Let's get to the exciting stuff right now. But, um, you know, at my facility, we follow the Russian rule of three. The rule of three basically states that, like, starting in the Eastern Bloc countries, as far back as the 50s and 60s, when they started pumping a lot of funds into um, uh, sport research, the, the, re the Russians essentially wanted to figure out, um, they, had their, they put their scientists to, uh, and their mathematicians to figuring out the greatest opportunity to win gold medals at the Olympics. And that was from the 60s to the 80s where they dominated. Weightlifting. Yes. yes. And uh, in the power sports also, so like throws. Um, so... The um, they identified, hey, these are the things that are going to make us better. And that's why they were on the cutting edge when America was putting all their money in the 60s, 70s, 80s into heart health. Right. And that's where, you know, the America's infatuation with distance running, all that stuff comes from. It's just where we put our money. It doesn't mean that it's actually the best thing for people. And so ultimately we go as sport research goes and um, whatever's getting the money is obviously what we're going to read in school. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, bring this full circle. I'm going to land this plane. Um, the Russians created this rule of three. To be the best in the world, they had to create a system that really was like a business, pumping out talent, and it was very cutthroat. If you were not a pro by the age of 16, you were out of the sport altogether. There was no pro sports. You're either, either going an to Olympian. The coal mines. <laughs> yes. You're either an Olympian or, um, yeah, exactly. You're you go pick up working in a brothel or something. <laughs> yes. I don't know what goes on in Russia. So, anyways, long story short, um, uh, we, there are things to be learned from that. The rule of three simply states that every three years, um, these athletes are pared down into narrower and narrower buckets of, of athletic traits until they eventually, you know, become elite in that sport. So at six years old, they start them in very general sports. And I don't think this is how they do it today, but this is how they did, did it for many decades when they ruled the world of sporting. Um, they would start them in general sports, namely wrestling and gymnastics at age six. Depending on the traits and their strengths showed, they would then begin to narrow them down into, you know, select few would stay in those sports, but many of them would go, would kind of branch out into maybe the track and field sports, swim, dive, that kind of a deal. And they would literally filter them based on their genetic predisposition and their, uh, Basically, the rate of skill acquisition. Like, I, what I get, what I are they see into, you know? The gymnastics shows an explosion. Uh, the wrestling will show your power. So I could see that being. But think of all the body control involved. Yes, the, the, the core movement strength. movement capabilities, yes. all that kind of stuff. And then if you have limitations, it's going to rear its ugly head right there. So yes. every three years, they would filter them down. Okay. Okay, we all clear on that? 
We use a similar model, not in the U.S., but at Grindhouse, we want to train general to specific. So we get kids as young as 10 years old, and the very first thing we do is try to build a foundation of athletic abilities. That does not ever include the barbell when they're beginners. Mm -hmm. You know, if you pay attention to what, like, you know, um, I'm building a curriculum based off one of my favorite textbooks, Science and Practice of Strength Training by um, Vladimir Zatsiorsky. And he said, you know, no athlete should do max effort exercises in, within their first three years of training age. The reason is they don't have, well, A, you're stepping over, you're missing the forest for the trees, essentially. But also, they don't have the kinesthetic awareness to even be safe under that stuff. The body control, learning how to pressurize your stomach, the structures all being, um, you know, supported correctly with the right mass, the right areas. And so for us, the closest thing we can get to gymnastics and wrestling for our 10 year olds is manual labor. Let's get them carrying each other. Let's get them crawling around on the ground. Let's get them jumping and hanging and uh, bending their bodies in weird ways. It's it doesn't look like what you think strength and conditioning is, but it is found and it's correct. Our goal with that is to build a robust um, base of uh, athleticism, qualities, these abilities that they can draw from later in their development. You can't start at the peak of the pyramid and try to work your way backwards. You ha The pyramid's only as tall as its base is wide. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, no. So with a tall, lanky kid that lacks that coordination, so, first of all, that's super common as they grow. I mean, imagine if um, uh, you're, you're shooting pool and someone just gives you a stick that's twice as long. Like you think you're going to – it's going to be like Kramer in his, in his house. Yeah, it's, it's Bambi. Putting holes in the wall, you know? These, these kids are literally Bambi. Yeah, they are. And they lose that ability to move fluidly. I do believe that lifting weights and moving external resistance, manipulating some another body that's not yours mm -hmm. is a great way to build it. Mm -hmm. um, but all at an appropriate, appropriate rate. So to answer your question, you're absolutely right, man. He doesn't need to be on ladders and things like that. That stuff doesn't do near what people hype it up to. Um, mainly because... The body doesn't have to coordinate itself to develop muscular tension to step in a tappy foot ladder. Um, so, yes, it looks like things are happening fast, but on the inside, things are very dull. When a kid actually has to strain against something heavy or an immovable object or something like that, um, think of like what people classify as man strength, being able to latch onto your forearm and not let go. Well, that was developed by you straining right yes and it coordinates all the muscles in your hands and your in your arms and everything you know, to be able to grasp and latch on yes. right yes it's called inter and intramuscular coordination those things are only developed through weights mm. you know so it's like we can't be maxing out kids but man one of the best programs for beginners uh, developed by the late great he just died dr michael yeses he came up with he came up with the one by 20 method he's like hey man all beginners need to do is get in do one set of 20 reps Cycle through about 10 to 20 exercises in a workout. Repeat that three times a week. And I've seen people get incredible results off this. It's amazing. But what are they getting? 20 reps is a whole lot of practice. Yes. The weight's not super heavy. It's not going to absolutely com compress or crush them, you know. Um, and uh, they walk away to live to fight another day, treating it more like a slow burn rather than like a – Now, now with now. weights um... – Sorry, dude. That was like a – phd answer i'm so sorry no it's okay it's okay i'm okay <clears throat> with it with with weights okay so now we're talking weights remember there used to be the old um wives tale that if a kid lifts weights it would stunt his growth mm. and it's still very common that people believe this so let's go ahead and tell them bust a myth for people out there <sighs> bust it that thing was disproven decades ago. Um, but again, so was the whole heart health thing, too. We know now that power and strength are the first things to degrade as you age, not cardiovascular health, right? So, like, it just because that's what our grandparents taught, you know, is, doesn't mean that's still true today. The growth plate thing, there's a caveat to this. It, you can absolutely stunt someone's, uh, like, uh, you know, negatively impact a kid's growth plates, Um through improper training means. Okay. Too much too early. Um, I, I can just imagine putting a kid, just completely overloading something that shouldn't be overloaded. You know what so I mean? So just like, causing the body to get You can do anything out. if you're causing dumb the, enough. Causing you know? the body to get out of alignment. Absolutely. And so 
again, going back to the principle of compression and expansion, you know, kids shouldn't be compressed at that age. You mm -hmm. have to build a resiliency to, you know, resist compression eventually. Um, and you could argue that's what real strength is. So ultimately, um, you know, you absolutely can. That happens in a very small percentage of individuals. And again, my part of what I do is literally giving the kids the, the training, the coaching that they can't get anywhere else. They come to me because these families have identified, hey, I'm not a professional in this. I'm, I'm willing to outsource this for the for the you know, benefit of my kids. You know what I mean? So this is kind of what we step in to do. This is part of our ethos. Um, but yeah, there are idiots out there like totally doing things improperly. The thing kids out, parents should be afraid of is the kids lifting, you know, learning how to lift from their buddies that are the same experience level as them in their garage unsupervised. You, you mean those That's high school, those high dangerous. school TikTok videos? Oh man, dude. Uh, so we'll come back to that because that that are coming okay. that go away. So now I read somewhere once that it's not so much the weights that are stunning the growth. But the kids are not stretching, so the tendons are getting too strong to allow the muscle, the bone to grow. Do you want to displace that one? So they're basically, saying they're, they're saying not stretching enough. They're not stretching so the enough. So the tendons doing more than the muscles. So the, everything's pulling tight. So when the body's trying to grow, it's being pulled back. Um. So that goes back to like, okay, so if that was true, then. Uh, Hanging off of a pull-up bar for five minutes a day would result in more inches. I don't know. Michael Jordan said he did. <laughs> well, there's a lot of things that work for Michael Jordan that don't work for anybody else. <laughs> but um, if we, if you just flip that one upside down, it would it, it would be reason to believe that hey, if I bend over and touch my toes every day or hang from a pull-up bar, or whatever, that we could add to our height. That's simply not true, mm -hmm. right? Um, there is absolutely a world in which the way you train impacts the. Um, uh, your tendons uh, more than it impacts your muscles, right? Like we've all done really fast calf raises. Well, what happens when you when you're just bouncing on that calf machine? Yeah. And no pause. Your Achilles tendon is doing all the work. Your muscles are not. You know, you're not getting any of the gastric, right? So I th I think that's about as far as it goes, to my knowledge. I definitely know if I hang off a pull bar, I'm not getting any taller. So you know, I, I tried I, it I as a kid. It didn't work. Bust that one. Yeah. <laughs> so. There's no hope for you, man. I'm sorry. I know. My, my dad was a midget, my biological. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, um, so we talk about kids. You said, uh, let's break it down to the, what the Russians did. Um, you, you stuck them in two different sports. So a lot of parents today like to stick their kids in one sport. Now. It's brutal. Is that in some way stunting their athletic ability? I mean, I want Johnny to be a baseball player, but Johnny has the eyesight of a, you yeah, yeah. can't see the ball. I do think we were all born athletes. Okay. I firmly believe that. The Lord gave us bodies to move. He made men competitive. Um, even females. We got some dogs in the gym, man, that changed my, like, literally the way I see female athletes. And, you know, I think we were made to move, compete, um, and, uh, and, and use our bodies in that way. I just don't think that every child was given a chance to really figure out the, the correct sport. And so I'll tell you what we're doing in our house. I can't do that stuff at Grindhouse. I can't unsee the things I've read and, and, and watched and viewed. So like um, my kids, my daughter's starting in gymnastics this year at five years old. Okay. Um, my son, um, I wanted, I'm trying to think of a way to guard him from the culture of gymnastics with, but get him in there. There is a direct correlation. The kids who grew up wrestling or doing gym, Dude, they are 10 times the athletes and the kids that just specialize in baseball, volleyball, football from as early as they could. 10 times the athletes. Uh, when I was young, I took ballet because I was clumsy. I fell down all over the place. And Lynn Swan took ballet, so I took ballet to help me learn to balance because I was just clumsy. But that was that growth spurt where I was falling over everything. People would take food away from me. Um, now, Well, it goes back to that pyramid I was talking about. The, the hierarchy of development. Those are just two sports that develop the base. And mm -hmm. dance has got to be one of those as well, right? Um, ballet in particular. There's a lot of – dancers have to be strong, right? So all we're really saying is we want to develop as many qualities as possible, like basically just tools in the tool bag to be drawn from eventually when they do specialize. But let's try everything. 
see what not only the kid enjoys because if a kid if happy athletes can be a higher performing athlete 10 days of the, of the week oh you mean like the silver and black smoking cigars this weekend exactly <laughs> and um uh you know let's give them every tool at their disposal so that they can become better problem solvers that's all or the body organizing itself is it's reacting to its environment so the more tools they have more successful they're probably going to be on a play now how do you deal with um the young once again i'm a stick stick in the uh the adolescent preteen that that goofy growth sport spurt where you mm -hmm. see like um the young man i have I, i'll refer back to you. i've got one young man and not like you at multi multis but you can see at some point in his life he's going to grow into something mm -hmm. how do you keep them from the frustration because they're looking over at the other kids and, you know, they can't, the, the foot's growing too big. They can't keep up with their foot. They're like Bambi. They're falling over themselves. How do you, how do you express to that child, that young man or the young girl? I keep saying young man because I've been referring back to, to yeah. the person I train. So forgive yeah. me out there. The young people that you do train, I'll get my brain right in a second. The young people that you do train, both male and female, to go, hey, patience and follow this right here. And we're going to get you to where you're guided. Because we'll go back to the TikTok. Yeah. You see the TikTok. Everybody wants to do the, the speed work, the ladder work. And they're watching these elite athletes like Tyreek Hill, whose fast twitch muscles are on another plane. And he's zo zooming in and out of these things. And they're wanting to do that when they can't even keep their feet straight. Narrow down your question. What are we asking? Okay. Um, how, do you, how do you keep a child motivated when it's, it's literally – their growth that's putting them behind the eight ball it it might be one of the, the most challenging aspects of our job you know and i relate it back to when i was a teacher in the classroom you know and you're dealing with a kid that just has circumstances maybe different than others learning disability whatever you know it's it's the thing we're trying to drive home is the principle that they can only control what they can control. Like don't waste worrying about that will not add another day to your life. That's in the word. Right. Um, but even beyond that, like we're trying to build character traits that they're going to carry with them for the rest of their lives past athletics. If they're worried about, you know, what they do or don't have genetically or otherwise, you know, it's going to cause other problems for them later on. So that's the message we're sending. Is that easy? No. And I'll be honest. <laughs> I, for every kid we've been successful getting them to you know change their perspective on that we've had one to two that didn't and you know burn out as a result it's usually not the kids though that are tall and lanky it's the ones who haven't hit their growth spurt yet so <sighs> it's the late bloomers the one that's 14 15 yeah, years old watching still, all of his friends grow leg hair do all that yes. stuff you know voices are getting deeper they're starting girls are like starting to be attracted to all of his buddies not him you get what i'm saying yes and we've dealt I, with I that i can relate more. that because i was a late bloomer i was mm -hmm. a late bloomer so i was tall and lanky at you know 14 15 years old and then i just it, i mean look at me it's really easy for me to pack on weight um i never really dealt with that man but i feel for the kids who do because let's face it it's the instant gratification that they're looking for and that's societal but we know as professionals it's learning to delay that gratification that results in success a lot of the time like just the flexing of that muscle the flexing of like hey the things i'm learning now are going to benefit benefit me so much more later i'm going to flip the script on that because i was thinking about kids that are playing ball and you find that one 12 year old that's already a grown man Ooh, yeah how do you deal with that kid letting him know like, hey, bro, at some point, somebody's going to catch up to you and I you're going to have hate that. Okay, good. <laughs> somebody's going to catch up to you and you're going to look, you're not going to be pushing the four foot two kid anymore. There's going to be another six foot five person across from you. I'll let you know when I'm successful doing it. Okay. Because we've had those kids and uh, we, I'll, I'll, I, I've got some volleyball girls in the gym, dude that look like seniors and okay. they're, they're 13, 14 years old. Okay. Two of them I signed up tonight. They're savages, bro. Okay. And, uh, I don't deal with it with the females. It's the boys. It is very difficult. They've been just molly whopping kids their entire lives. Yes. It is so hard to get them. How do you teach a young man? They're already stubborn as it is. Yes. I, I am to this day, you know, I, I don't know that I would listen either, you know, um, the test, 
is when they come in and you go, oh, that's a strapping young lad. Like, okay, we might have something to work with here. I haven't pulled the pant leg. Show me your leg here. And if you're 13 years old, uh, mature, you know, in the face, you know, a kid who's hit puberty and they got leg hair, their development's just about done. I'm like, there's nothing left, okay. you know? And I tell their parents, like I tell them in the meeting, like this is at the sales console. Like I'm trying to get their business, right? I'm like, Hey, like, we got to set some expectations here because I, th- what you guys want, I think you're looking in the wrong place. Like we have to, you're going to have a huge target on your back and everyone else is going to catch up to you in about two years. How do you, how does a kid see that? You know what I mean? I so, remember, uh, remember how to track me. Just, just a quick flashback. I'm a hijacker. And I was in the sixth grade. It was um, championships. And this kid lined up next to me with a mustache. And I oh, remember I looking up at him going, whose dad are you? <laughs> yeah. There are a couple like kids like that in town right now, man. Uh, and, and you're just watching him just, just mop the floor. And I lost that track meet because I looked back for him. I, hey, there's a lesson there. That, I, I, that's like a parable. Oh, I look back for him. And I, when I went to the, when I got, because I came from a family, I got to the, I got yelled at when I got over there. And they were like, what were you looking for? So I was looking for the tall kid. He's all, he was way in the back. Oh, and I was like, shoot. Yeah. So you it lost just, because you were looking back. That's yeah. Brutal. So, and it, it, so it, sometimes, I guess that what I'm trying to say, is it doesn't always, just because your kid's the biggest and he's bullying those people doesn't necessarily mean he's got athlete, uh, he's an athlete. Um, I mean, uh, hey. So when you're talking these, telling these parents like, "Hey, your kid's big and bullying everybody," <sighs> right okay, now, okay, okay, but you and I both played at the next level. Like, we have a different. I I so much more enjoy talking to parents who played that sport, whatever it is, or just played anything in college. It, their perspective on this is way different. You know, the issue usually comes when like the kid with a super mature 12 13 year old you know they did their their, the last level of ball they played was senior in high school you know and um and so they're living vicariously through their stud kid but man it's like what would you rather be i played with guys that literally hit their um uh you know uh they bloomed they blossomed in junior college and became killers, you know what I mean? Because they had had to endure all the lessons of being the pipsqueak, whatever. They they were patient. They uh, bowed their time. Um, they they uh, put off that gratification thing, and they stuck with it. Eventually, sprouted like a beanstalk, you know. And oh, guess what? They have a lot more resources available to them at 19, 20 years old. We can all fall back to the Michael Jordan, you know. Oh, man. Yeah, well, he's a great example of that, you know. Uh, and so I'm looking at his parent. I'm like, what would you rather have? Okay, a I, kid that's all NOR or, you know. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the parents now. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna get, you, uh, so we weren't planning on going this way. I wasn't planning on going this way with him. But I have to ask. Okay, so now we're talking about the parent who lives vicariously through their child. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I uh, guess they're trying to get me fired. Yeah, um, so and, and how do you tell that parent like, hey, your expectations are here? Because I've, I, man, I there's so many things I've seen parents doing to their children, in hopes of getting them to the next yeah. level. And I'll come back to that conversation because I will take it over from there. But how do you talk to the parent? I can give you two examples just happened the last two weeks. So one happened this evening <laughs> and the other one happened about two weeks ago. So the first one, you know, I got a mom that um, she is a club volleyball coach and her she bumped up both of her daughters to play for her. And that says a lot in, in itself, right? Um, and clearly she thinks very highly of, of her daughters and they're not great movers. She swears they're great volleyball players and I'm – I have a hard time seeing it, but I haven't seen him play. I could be totally wrong. Um, I know there's other things going on there, you know, and um, and at the end of the day, I've just – being a teacher and now being a coach, I've seen the other side of that where, like, you've got overbearing parents that expect so much of their kids. It's, it, it's its own brand of toxicity. So as coaches, you know, I address it head on to temper their expectations of what they can achieve in our program. I had a mom tonight. The second example is she, she said, yeah, we're coming to you guys from this other place. Listen, we weren't getting the results we want. We're bringing like six volleyball families with us because we've heard the last year, 
the amazing results you guys get. And we want that. We were just there because our club was there. And I was like, cool. That's like music to my ears. Keep going. And she goes, yeah, so I was just kind of thinking like, you know, I'd really love to see three, four inches on my daughter's vertical in probably the next like two weeks. <laughs> I'm like, then it's not a good fit, mom. <laughs> and her daughter goes, what? We've never told that before, you know? Uh, and um, I go, yeah, it's not a good fit. Like, if that's what you're expecting, you're going to be disappointed. Like, but, I don't care how good your daughter is at 13 years old. I don't see any college scholarships being given out to BBC volleyball players at 13, you know? So I really care about slow burning this thing, and her peak will be so much higher if we do it patiently and correctly. By the time she's 17, 18, and she'll have the world to be her oyster because she's a freaking stud sitting on my couch right now. So I tell them up front, I go, hey, it's not a good fit. And I'm so comfortable doing that because I want the right families in my in my gym. It's like, dude, you ever get a red flag about a girlfriend and it like it came back? Like you didn't you didn't act on it. You're like, hey, there's something wrong. There's something that that was a little fishy. And then uh, that same whatever it was that you sensed comes back around six months later. I thought that you're always to happens. Past the red flag. You just keep past them and just go, wee. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, that's not how I roll. So <laughs> I was, I, dude, they always result. If there's craziness on the front end, there's going to be a lot of craziness on the back end. Now, let's go back know? to the vertical, vertical real quick. Um, realistically, do people actually jump higher in their lifespan or they just get taller? No, no, no. They jump higher. We have vert mats that, like, okay. that uh, uh, objectively do all that it's not a reach does okay. that make sense yeah so uh, now two to three inches on a vert that's a lot so what 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 would be a time frame for something like that it's a loaded question because we're better at it than most so okay. like on average in the first 12 weeks in our program uh our males average four to six inches on their vert okay and then um our females are about three to five okay uh, it really depends on like their history of jumping you know like do they are they a kid who's you know played field sports like a soccer player mm -hmm. football player not jumping's not really their sport versus like a basketball player volleyball player really they just you need to add horsepower and add it now they add some strengths and power like they are already good at jumping you okay. know what i mean they mastered that skill um, for instance, we had a, uh, um, like one of my poster children. I love this girl to death. She's one of my OGs. I've had her for the last two and a half years. She's playing in Spain right now as a 16 year old and, uh, she's a savage. She won't be moving back actually because, uh, she's, she's doing her thing, man. And, uh, when she, when she came to me two and a half years ago, she was, um, her vert was 16 inches and, um, and she's Puerto Rican, good genetics, 5'11", like she's a stud. And uh, uh, when she left me in the fall to go to Spain, she jumped 28'2". Now, the NCAA Division One average is 21.6. So when, you, when you're talking about a 30-inch jumper, really anything over 26 inches is like elite, 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 elite. And, you know, really we all, all we had to do was work on strength. It was so simple because she already mastered jumping and all those other things, you know? So it kind of depends. It's kind of loaded and we're kind of better than most. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, I told mom, I was like, Hey, in two weeks, you, you, we could reasonably see an inch or two. Cause we will change the brain. Yeah. We'll be firing differently, you know, uh, neurologically, but like, that's not really what I'm going for. Like you're, she came in and she jumped to 17 tonight. So do I want her at a 19? No, that's like, you know what I mean? I'd love to see her above 26. Yeah. So which one, which one would you like, mom? You know what I mean? And that's a better answer. Like, okay, cool. You're looking, you're looking at today. I'm looking at tomorrow. Yeah. And you know what? Um, I was actually writing this on the way home because that, that conversation stuck, it stuck out to me. That's going to be my next YouTube video. Cause it's like, just like musings and ramblings about, you know, it's so good to set firm expectations with people and it be as black and white as you can be because then no one's disappointed. They can't say like you you were selling them snake oil or, or you were dishonest or any of this stuff. Like, again, if they don't like that answer, it's an immediate filter to filter out the wrong people. And something you got to know about me, Steve, like for, for whoever needs to hear this, I've set up as many filters in my life as possible and it keeps me the happiest I've ever been. All right. Um, before we shut down, this is going to be the fun one. Hmm. How do you break it to a parent? Your kid's not athletic. Okay, so the parent from two weeks ago. <laughs> I, I don't when you said what you said, right. when I you just, said it a second ago, I was like, 
Ooh, because there are some parents yeah. that just like, swear the little Johnny, little 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 Sarah is a stud. And uh, well, you probably heard Tom say this. So he was the he he tells everybody we run into. Uh, Blake's got this machine. It's called the Proteus. We we have a bunch of testing equipment at the gym. I've spent more money on on basically uh, 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 machines and electronics that can produce analytics and objective analyses of how an athlete is okay. doing than I ever have on squat racks. Okay. And the reason for that is we can we can test, we can train, we can do it all objectively. So it takes the emotions out of it. So really, I don't. Um, I, it's not it's not a subjective analysis of like hey your your son or daughter needs these things that would piss somebody off okay. that make me mad yes. right but if you say like hey averages for your son the metrics we're trying to hit are here he like failed all of these you know what I mean they're like oh hey if the standard is a standard you know what I mean so it's easier to look at them and say okay I can teach your kid to be a better better athlete and we will make your kid better than he currently is 100%. but he's not going to the NFL. That's a tough one. I've never said that because, again, I don't want to shut a, shut down a kid's dreams. Yes, you know, like I've if if uh, what's his face, um, <laughs> if Spud Webb can make it to the NBA, and if uh, you know uh, uh, Sproles, Darren Sproles can make it to the NFL, dude, any of these kids can. And I will never. At the end of the day, our whole ethos is like creating opportunities for those who wouldn't otherwise have it. So I'm never going to shut that down. Um, and I want them to hang on to every bit of that dream for as long as they can. I think that'll produce per perseverance and, um, you know, um, uh, uh, bearing with all the struggles of life. And sports will ultimately teach these kids way more than I ever could anyway. So, like, stay uh -huh. in it as long as you can. Chase that dream, you know. Okay, but going back to, like, like I've got a machine that literally – they do a five-minute test on this thing. It'll tell <laughs> – literally – Per your age, height, weight, sport, and position, you fall into these percentiles for for power, acceleration, um, basically how well you're using your body mass. Like high, high, it's a it's a, a, a composite of like their outputs versus their height and weight and stuff like that. And when you tell a kid you're in the 21st percentile for your age, height, weight, position, all that stuff, like the parents kind of like they kind of start rubbing their eyes, like <laughs> oh man, guys, we're pretty far off. It does the job for me. Okay. You know? Yeah. And I just say, hey, now you want to talk about how we're going to change that? Yes. And, and, that's, and that's why I like that answer. That's a great answer because, you know, kids, every kid should be able to play sports. I think sports um, build so much character. I think sports help you overcome adversary in life. Uh, if you if you wrestle something, jump against something, compete against something, run against something, it helps you be better versed as an adult when adversary comes because you know how to compete against it. And sports, like, in a vacuum are very chaotic. But sports compared to life, I mean, it's a controlled environment. Yes. So we can choose, hey, we're going to put our kids on this team with this coach pouring into them on a daily basis. And we largely know what's going to happen on those Saturday afternoons or whatever. You know what I mean? So that's a lot more controlled than, like, I don't know, home life, work environment, you know, that's erratic. And I, I, don't, I don't know. I think that's one. sports are one of the best things um, – that we can engage in as families, especially you know, young, like hormonal athletes. I think sports are great for that, that hormone stage where they're just angry and they're yelling. When's football practice? When's volleyball practice? Where are you going to go get some of that energy out of you? Well, when are you going? What time would you go into Blake's today? <laughs> well, we can talk about like the history of physicality, you know, and sports are very much a 20th century thing. Um, but you know, Predating that, um, physicality as a whole was like ingrained in our culture. I'm going to cut you like off. A... I'm cutting them off so you guys have something to tune <laughs> into for next week. Next time. Yes, now you guys have something to, to tune in for. Yes, because we're going next week episode because I wanted him to get enough of that out so you guys <laughs> would be there and be like, hey, 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 I want to hear the rest of it. If you want to hear the rest of it, what do they need to do next week? Tune in, man. So, hey, and I'm kickstarting my YouTube channel. That's Blake Bernard Coaching. Bernard spelled with a U. We're, I talk about this kind of stuff because, as you can tell, I could go on forever about it. Um, so, if you want more of that, tune in th there. Tune in here. You can find me at uh, Grindhouse underscore SC. And uh, we're always, like, you know, highlighting our people, what they're doing, what gets them awesome results, but also what you as parents can do to uh, set your kids up for success. Steve, where, where can they find you? 7420 District Boulevard, Sportlander West. I want to come in with a voice like that next <laughs> time. Catch everybody off guard. Guys, until next time, hail strength.